Round start. Fantastic! Unbelievable! Hello everybody, my name is Catastrophe Games, and welcome to my Hawked Tips and Tricks video part 3! Welcome to part 3, hopefully you watched part 1 and part 2, and I hope you guys really enjoyed these new styles of videos that I'm putting out on the channel. So now that we made it to part 3, I kind of hinted at it in the last episode, but we're going to go to the gun range, or the shooting range. Here you can practice with all sorts of guns, practice your aim, practice your shots, and just learn more about the weapons. There are a lot of weapons in the game and a lot of other items that can affect your gameplay and the rounds that you're having when you're going out treasure hunting. Because there's so much variation, there's just so much variation in like, kind of like mixes that you can do with different guns and different modifications and different like consumable foods. And it's just all really cool. So, you can locate the shooting range just right here. It's kind of right across from the quarters, which is down there. And once you enter, it's going to load you into a new map. Because I don't think you can be with people here, unless you're a party, maybe? Um, I guess they just don't want everyone being in there spamming bullets, which I kind of understand. That's very helpful, but yeah. It's going to load you into the shooting range. Sometimes it glitches out and the guns don't load. Just go back up and come back in. See, like, right here, like, things didn't load there. Maybe it'll take a while. Uh, something's loaded there. But nothing's loading here. Let's see if I walk up to it and I pick something up. Will they come? Will they, will they load? No, okay, so we're gonna have to, have to redo that. I'm not gonna be too harsh on the game when it comes to little bugs like that because it is in the beta phase, but it still feels like it's it's pretty close to a complete and fully fleshed out game. There's just a lot of wrinkles they have to iron out, you know? A lot of wrinkles. Like in the last episode, we had that weird glitch or bug or something with me where I was basically staggered or something all the time. Like I was visually glitched and my movement was glitched and it was just weird. Let's get back into here. Oh, that looked, that looked funky. That didn't look right. Let's see if hopefully that fixed the gun range or shooting range. Ah, there we go. Okay, so everything has loaded in. So, um, first things first, let's talk about the ammo. There's three types of ammos and each like kind of gun, or there are three different types of guns and they take three different types of ammos. Now, most people are probably used to how like the Fortnite system works where there's like pistol ammo and then sniper ammo and then shotgun ammo. Yeah, this is not like that. So for example, something like SMGs and assault rifles and pistols all share that one ammo. So think of it like that. There's three different weapon types and each weapon type takes ammo or their respective ammo. So we have the energy ammo for the energy weapons. We have the common or regular ammo for like regular guns. So th those would be like your uh, SMGs or like an AK-47 if it's in this game or like a revolver, like they take that ammo. And then you have this, what's called efficient ammo. Now that's for the more cool special weapons. For example, there's an explosive rifle. There is a full on like rocket launcher. That's, that takes this ammo. So let's go and gather all of this and we can go and test out some weapons. So first things first, let me introduce you to all the weapons. We have over here, the assault rifles up there, those special weapons I was telling you about, like there's a laser beam and a uh, explosive rifle. Then you have your SMGs. You have these legendary weapons, which come from like boss battles and you can buy them on the shop on the Exiles. There's a shop where you can buy weapons if you have enough, what's called hype, which I guess if you survive long enough, then you can buy these weapons off the shop. Then you have your shotguns up there, your pistols over there, your sniper rifles here. And then these are your LMGs. Now you can probably already tell but similar to Fortnite and other games, other Battle Royale games, there is sort of like a quality or rarity type of system uh, when it comes to the guns. So green is the most common and the weakest rarity or quality. Blue is the next grade up and then purple is the best. There's also a yellow grade, but so far the yellow grade is only reserved for the shield mod. There hasn't been a yellow grade gun yet. At least not that I've seen. Maybe these can be a yellow grade gun? No, they can't. So, 
while you're in the shooting range, don't get confused because yours might look a little different than mine. Not all guns are stuck with that one type of quality. So for example, this green Mazikin is not going to always be a green Mazikin. There are blue and purple Mazikins. So each gun can be each different type of rarity or quality. And to change that in the, what is this? And to change like the rarity or quality in the shooting range to test things out, all you have to do is just walk up and press E to change quality. So let's go test things out with my favorite, one of my favorite weapon, which is the Dark Spark. We're gonna get one low quality Dark Spark or the common rarity. I'll, you know, I'll just call it green color, purple color, blue color. We're gonna go to a purple color now. We're gonna test out the damages on them so I can show you the differences in rarity and why it's so important and impactful. You probably already know this, but you know, if I'm gonna cover like everything else, I might as well cover the basics, right? So let's try out the weaker dark spark, the green dark spark. Let's see what, how much it does in one headshot. That's weird, it didn't hit him. That's weird, it didn't hit him. Wait, is. I hit that guy? Oh, that's weird. Why can't I hit this guy? Oh, there we go. Wow, that was... I was shooting behind him. That's weird. Okay. That that was weird there. But yeah, let's see. What was the damage? I didn't see it. Okay, 14 for the green dark spark. Now the purple dark spark. Would that say 20? 28? That was 17 now. 19... 16, why is it going lower and lower? Well, whatever. The main point is that it does more damage, right? Like, that's what I wanted to show. I am curious, though, why it's getting lower and lower. I don't know. I'm doing headshots. Okay, now that's 15. That's 22. All right, that... Oh, is it because of shield? Oh, maybe energy weapons do more damage to shields. That would make sense. 13 to health. 20 to health. Okay, well, what, whatever. Test out the guns here, but the main point is that, obviously, the better quality gun does the better damage, but not each gun has the same, like, damage difference. For example, the Mazikeen, I believe, is only a damage difference of one between the grades, especially with headshots. So, it's a little weird. I wonder if it's just a difference of the fire rate instead, but I guess we'll see right now. So, uh, let's choose you. Headshot. That did 11 damage on the green, and then this one should do 12. I missed. Yeah. So 11 to 12, and that's... The purple one is two grades up. So I don't really know what's so special about the purple one. Like, what does the blue one do? 11.5 or something? Like... Try this. Oh, the blue does 11 as well. Okay, so why would you pick up a blue Mazikeen versus a green Mazikeen? It's basically the same thing. Unless it's the fire rate's different. Oh! Oh, it looks like it is! Okay, well that's something new when it comes to the Mazikeen. Look at that, I'm learning things with you guys, isn't that cool? So the green one seems to shoot a little bit slower than the blue one. Either that or I'm bugging. No, yeah, the blue one definitely shoots faster than the green one. Okay. So fire rate is also impacted, not just damage. That's interesting. Wow, I didn't think of that. Wow, look at that. We're learning all these new things. But yeah, one other thing I want to cover is that I found that energy weapons also have a lot less recoil than the common weapons. So we're going to pick up a Gar and a Moon Duster, and I'm just going to show you the recoil of the Moon Duster. Right, so it's a burst fire, but you didn't see that much recoil. I don't want to use a burst fire, though. Let's use the Duonic. There's a recoil. I was holding it down very slightly. Now look at the Gar. Yeah, the Gar kind of just goes everywhere. So if you're a new... If, like, you're a new player and you're new to shooters and stuff and you don't really know how to aim and you want to practice aiming 
I suggest picking up energy-based weapons, because energy-based weapons just... Overall, in general, I found they have less recoil. The recoil doesn't go as crazy as other weapons. Let's see if I can show that with, like, the Dark Spark versus... Like, the auto attack. So here's the auto attack. Now, the auto attack is a automatic weapon, though. You can see it bursts up into three. Oh, here's the Dark Spark. Pretty spot on, right? Not a burst, though. Now that we covered all of the guns, let's cover, like, these special melee weapons. I haven't used any of these ones here, so I'm not going to talk about them. But I'll talk about the Ultra Hammer and the Islander Staff, because I've used both of them before. These, as you can probably see, are melee weapons. The animation for them is pretty wonky. And honestly, you're probably going to get messed up if you use these on anything else besides PvE creatures. One thing you're going to see down below is that they don't take ammo, but they do have a durability stat. So if I were to hit these things with my Islander Staff, for example, I'm losing durability. And if I lose durability all the way down to zero, then the Islander Staff essentially breaks and I can't use it again. How much damage did this do, by the way? I can't really see because I'm so close. Well, that guy died. It's definitely not a one-shot, so let's try it on this one. It looked like 13 per hit. Do headshots matter on these? No, because you can't aim it up. It just hits the same spot. All right, so it's like 13 per hit on a purple Islander staff. Not the best, especially when you have to get up and close to them and they have guns and, and they can roll and everything. You can throw your melee, like, uh, I guess, ultimate weapons, but it's a little weird. Oh, 40 a hit. That's actually not that bad if it's 40 a hit. It looks like 40 flat, too. Like, it doesn't matter where you aim. So I guess that's why you'd want the melee weapons, because you don't have to aim. But, yeah. Here's the Ultra Hammer. Go a lot slower. Slower combos. You can throw this one as well. Travel slower. 60 a hit, though. That's not bad. That's not bad. If you manage to actually land it and stick it, it's not bad. The range on it isn't that great, though. There's, like, a throwing arc. So you kind of have to, like, arc it to hit stuff. Oh, I missed. About here. Oh, too low. About here. Yep, there you go. Yeah, you kind of like aim, have to aim above. Okay, the Islander Staff goes farther. Ah, the Islander Staff is... Ooh. Okay, the range on the Islander Staff is probably nice if you're just throwing it. But, like, I don't know. They're going to be shooting at you with, a, with, like, an automatic weapon. So, if they're good at shooting, like, if they hit you with the Mazikeen, for example... You're probably not gonna want the Islander staff. I'm just, I'm just saying. Like, for legendary weapons, they're they're kind of disappointing. But those are the legendary weapons I have experience with. So those are the ones I'm going to show and teach you today. Like, look at that. I, if that guy had an Islander staff, I would, I would have killed him. And I was only shooting his legs. Next up, let's talk about the mods. Mods are super cool because they add variation to the gameplay. Um, they essentially just add different stat buffs. For example, there's this one for sprinting, there's these ones for combat, they do different things. There are shields, there's life. Um, what else, what else, what else? I think that's it. You can only have, like, one of each mod. So let me see, if I have the sprinting mod, I can have that with my shield mod, and I can have that with a uh, combat mod, and then I can have a health mod. So now I have all of that together all of these mods put together and um, I can run super fast as you can see I have extra health and I have extra shield sadly you can't stack uh, mods in their specific groups so for example I can't stack the green shield with the blue shield and the yellow shield it just doesn't stack it's like it's just better to just get the yellow shield because I end up with 90 so if I get the blue shield it goes down to 70 same happens with the combat mods if you hear chirping by the way that's my bird the same happens with the combat mod, so if I get the suppressor weapon mod, and then I want a... Ooh, the hot shots weapon mod, it's going to switch out the suppressor with the hot shots. So you can't have multiple uh, combat mods. You just can't have multiple of the same mods at the same time. Mods, by the way, can be found in loot chests or on players after you've downed them. Or killed them, I should say. 
Okay, next up on the list in terms of variations and like weapons and stuff that you can find on the map are going to be the consumables. One of the main consumables you're probably going to want is the Helicola, because the Helicola is going to be your main method of healing. But there are other consumables that give all sorts of effects, and unlike with mods, some of them can stack. So, for example, the... or maybe all of them can stack, actually. Maybe all of them can stack, and I'm not entirely sure. Well, these ones definitely don't stack, but for example, the Shield Up Eel, once you eat it and you can't pocket any of these consumables, you just pick them up and your character consumes them. Once you eat it, it adds to your shield and it stacks. So right now I'm at 85, now I'm at 100. Can I go higher? Now I'm at 115. So if you come across Shield Up Eels, make sure you just eat them right away. You can get these from the NPC PVE monster drops. And you can also find them laying around in the map uh, or in those yellow crates. Next up is the Haste Shroom. Pretty simple. You just eat it and then you can run faster. You kind of have the Haste buff. It's kind of like if you had a free uh, gear because the gear that I have gives me this Haste buff. So if you find this Haste Shroom for 20 seconds, you essentially have what my gear does. I'm pretty sure it's stacked, so maybe you can run for longer. I don't know if it just resets the timer or anything. Okay, next up are these two. This is the Exposer Frog and the Looter Kebab. These things, when you eat them, they reveal things in the area. The Exposer Frog reveals enemies, and the Looter Kebab uh, reveals, like, weapons, chests, and loot, so trinkets and whatnot. Let's try the Exposer Frog, and this is gonna hurt your ears, so be careful. Look at that. All of my enemies got highlighted and exposed. I can see them through walls and obstacles. Really good, really good. The Looter Kebab works in much the same way, except that only works for loot. It's not going to show any loot here because there's just, there's no loot here. So, yeah. Now, this one is actually really cool. It's going to be hard for you guys to see because it's not really going to happen on time. So, we're just going to eat it right now. The Strange Fruit essentially drops any of these items. Like, any of these fast consumable items the ones that you just pick up and eat oh it just did it real quick right here so there you go it dropped me a healing fruit it's going to drop any of these ones the ones that you can't pocket every 45 seconds so it's a really nice buff it's a permanent buff like throughout the round so that's really cool you just eat one of these and while you're running just like oh look a shield up eel just dropped you know stuff like that you can stack up your shield stack up your health whatever speaking of health that's why we're going to get up to this heal or health up cocktail i almost said heal up the health up cocktail um acts much like the shield up eel except it's for your health so if i drink this it should increase my max health yep now i'm at 150 does it go past 150 oh now i'm at 160 and just like the shield up eel it stacks oh look at that my shield up eel a shield up eel for me dropped so cool so cool i love the strange fruit a lot lastly there is the healing fruit pretty straightforward eat it to heal your health in a tight situation Especially if you're running, say you're running away from someone and you just see the health fruit, just quickly grab it while you're running. Boom, there you go. Oh, I picked the wrong one, but here, let's do it here. Oh, I can't do it because I'm damaged. I'm not damaged, but... Yep, that's going to cover all the consumables. One last, I guess, consumable is going to be the adrenaline kit. But unlike all the other consumables here, it's much like that heal up cola where you can just pocket it and heal yourself. I can't heal right now because I... Well, I'm not damaged, but you can pocket it, hold it for your game, and then just heal up later. The adrenaline is for when you are downed. You can essentially just revive yourself, like pick yourself back up. Oh my gosh, guys, look, look what I did. I left because I had to walk my dog, and after I walked my dog, I went to get a snack, and look what happened. Okay, yeah, so, so the... Uh, the strange fruit is a permanent buff, I guess if you just... Wait, that's actually like... <laughs> that's not bad, I'm not going to lie. You can just, you can basically just like stand on an extraction point after eating a strange fruit, leaving all these heals and buffs for your team to just consume. <laughs> that's actually not a bad strategy. No one's going to be able to extract over that extraction point that you're covering now. Because if you just stood in a corner with all of this spawning, <laughs> and they don't go away, they they stay there. <laughs> you just keep going for it. <laughs> this is this is sick, man.
Just, ah, oh, I need healing. Oh, just pick up this peach. Oh, that was a grenade. Right. <laughs> let's, uh, let's restart it all here because... Oh my god, that is funny. That, oh, look at how much there is. There's so much that they're floating on top of each other. Oh, that is so funny. Oh, that's hilarious. Okay, let's get out of here. <laughs> it's gonna take such a long time loading. Game's like, man, I gotta clean up all this food. Anyways, back to the video. I believe I was going to show you guys the grenades next. So, honestly, maybe the video is getting a little too long. I don't like these tutorial videos getting too long. So, we're gonna have to do a part four because obviously weapons and stuff are a big part of the game. Uh, and we have to go back up and respawn everything anyways. So I think in the next episode, we're going to cover some like aiming, tr aiming uh, mechanics and shooting mechanics and stuff like that. That's going to be a really quick one, I think. Definitely shorter than this episode. So please be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more Hawk tutorials by me. I hope that this helped you out and was at least mildly entertaining. I hope you enjoy uh, your Hawked gameplays, or not hot gameplays, but I just hope you have a good time with the game, essentially. I hope you get the best of luck when you're trying to get whatever loot you're trying to get. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace out, everybody.